to the world in the field of peace, harmony and human development. He is the youngest ever recipient of a police medal for meritorious service in India and the first ever police officer to receive the highest military honor for gallantry Kirti Chakra. A true embodiment of excellence A true embodiment of excellence throughout his life, Sri Ajit Doval is the recipient of numerous national and international awards and honorary doctorates. Sri Doval was instrumental in signing of Mejo Peace Accord that ended the violent insurgency in India's northeastern state of Mizoram. He played a pivotal role in the merger of Sikkim with India in 1970s, Mr. Ajit Doval had a seminal role in restoring peace in Punjab. His role as a successful negotiator and crisis manager for government of India has become a part of local folklore in India. Mr. Doval has played a key role in bringing peace and normalcy to Kashmir. His, his unwavering Commitment to fostering trust and goodwill across communities in India makes him a national icon. Through his interaction with the common people and as the Honorable Prime Minister's envoy for engagement with the Muslim community, he consistently prioritizes consensus building, diffusing tensions and resolving challenging situations. His efforts have successfully united people during crucial juncture. Like the recent pandemic, Ram Mandir announcement and unfortunate instances of communal flare-up like the one seen in Delhi in 2020. It was his initiative a few months ago in this very conference hall that in High-level delegation of Ulema from Indonesia deliberated with prominent thought leaders from India on crucial issues of our time. Before this, he mentored the World Sufi Forum to bring together diverse voices from more than 30 countries, including Sufi Shuyu, spiritual leaders, <coughs> scholars, academicians, and masters of Sufism to provide a platform for exchange of ideas. His initiative of outreach to Indian Muslim community have earned him immense respect and goodwill. Sri Doval's name has become synonymous with integrity and commitment to one's national duty. He has been a motivating force for India's youth to work towards a brighter future, one where India can become the guiding light for the rest of the world in promoting the interest of humanity. I request His Excellency Sri Ajit Doval, National Security Advisor of India, to kindly address us, please. Your Excellency, Dr. Mohammed bin Abdul Karim Alisa, Secretary General Muslim World League, members of your esteemed delegation, Excellencies, Mr. Siraj Qureshi, Chairman, India Islamic Cultural Center, Dr. Hafiz Rama, Director of Kusra Foundation, scholars and eminent persons present, members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my proud privilege today to welcome His, His Excellency and convey my most sincere gratitude for accepting our invitation to visit India. It was indeed a treat to listen to him today and to see the visionary thought of a great scholar, a jurist, a 
person well versed with Islamic jurisprudence and understanding of the global events. His message is loud and clear that we live in harmony, we live in peace if you would like to protect the future of humanity. Excellency, you as an authentic global voice of moderate Islam and a profound scholar, adored and respected by millions of people around the world. We in this hall were singularly fortunate to have this opportunity of hearing. Excellency, your deep understanding of Islam and religions of the world, incessant efforts towards interfaith harmony, courage to persistently lead on the path of reforms is not only contributing to better understanding of Islam and its seminal contribution to humanity, but also preventing extremist and radical ideologies to play, play the young minds. In their capacity, as Secretary General of the Muslim World League, you have extensively traveled throughout the world and propagated your message of peace, empathy and coexistence in the most unambiguous and effective way, the way that we heard it today. Your interactions and persuasive articulations have not only brought about a deeper and better understanding of Islam, but also worked as a catalyst in promoting the values of compassion, tolerance and respect among different faiths and different people. The world in conflict and turmoil today needs it more than ever before. Friends, we are proud of the accent relations that exist that exist between India and Saudi Arabia, which are rooted in shared cultural heritage, common values and economic ties. Our leaders share a common vision of the future and have been closely interacting with each other. The enduring profoundness of our historic relationship can be understood from the fact that during Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him time and the marriage of, and his marriage with Hazrat Hadija, she had liking, she had expressed her liking for silk and shawls from Kashmir in India. <laughs> Excellency, India, the world's largest democracy and the mother of democracies, is a land of incredible diversity. In your talk, you elaborately mentioned about diversity as a fundamental trait of our existence. It has been a melting pot of cultures, religions, languages, and ethnicities which have coexistence and coexisted in harmony for centuries. As an inclusive democracy, India has successfully managed to provide space for all its citizens regardless of their religious, ethnic, and cultural identity. Amongst its numerous religious groups, Islam occupies a unique and significant position of pride, with India being home to the second largest Muslim population in the world. In fact, to give an idea of the scale we are talking about, Indian Muslim population is almost equal to the combined population of over 33 member states of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. As I just mentioned, Islam arrived in India in the 7th century during the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and gradually found a new home in this subcontinent. Over the centuries, it developed a unique syncretic tradition. It was kinetic and dynamic. It expanded and integrated. It was reformative and it was also which enriched the culture of the new land that they have arrived. The deep spiritual content of Hinduism and Islam brought the people together and helped in bringing about 
the social and intellectual understanding of each other. It gave rise to a distinct and vibrant expression of peace and harmony, notwithstanding the vagaries of political up and down. While the historians have focused more on the political events, they have failed to capture this underlying spirit of accommodation, tolerance and respect, the, social, the powerful societal undercurrents that brought the people together and cemented their relations. The Holy Quran emphasizes the importance of unity and understanding among people from diverse backgrounds. Excellency, you mentioned about the diversity. That the purpose behind the diversity, that is what the Holy Quran says, that the humans were created and divided into different communities and the diversity was created among the tribe and people to facilitate mutual acquaintance and recognition. Excellency, you have also in your speeches, frequently called for civilization reproachment based on our shared values and common interests to advocate the spirit of justice and universal brotherhood. The philosophy of cooperation and dialogue in Islam has over the centuries merged seamlessly with the ancient Hindu civilizational tradition of Vasudhaya Kutumbakam, the world is one family. The descent to which you concluded your talk by telling that the world is one family is ingrained in our spiritual, in our, in our uh, religious books, but more importantly in the psyche of the people that we consider the entire world as one family. It was not a quick of history, but it was only by being open to accommodating various world views and ideas, interactions and assimilations of various cultures, beliefs and practices that India emerged as a sanctuary for persecuted people of all faiths from across the world since time immemorial. And you have worked, welcomed Arab exiles in the court of Raja Dahir of Sindh, Jews, Tibetans, Parsis, Shias, Bangladeshis, Afghans and many others with open arms. This enduring tradition of accommodation is a testament to India being a deeply rooted multi-ethnic, multi-religious and multilingual society which believes and have an abiding faith in the commonality and the unity of all human beings. Swami Vivekananda in the famous parliament of world's religions in Chicago in 93, had declared, and I quote, I'm, prou I'm proud to belong to a nation which has sheltered the persecuted and the refugees of all religions and all nations of the earth. This ethos of acceptance becomes all the more significant whether it is Islam, given that at a time when Islamic golden age was coming to an end with the Mongol capture of Baghdad, in 1258, Indian heartland was quietly nurturing a Sufi renaissance with many sages and mystics spreading their message of peace and brotherhood. It was otherwise a time of great tumult in which striking change, changes in the rings of ideas and beliefs were taking place and believe, were all around the world. The Islamic world had suddenly lost its political heft but its super spiritual and its, human, and its humane appeal continued to exist and exist as a very powerful force. A new orthodoxy was trying to challenge the Islamic universe of thought and in the midst of all this, India offered an oasis of stability and peace where yogis and calendars, the mystical masters, pilgrims, exiles, dissidents from different schools of thoughts found a new home. The close interaction of the people led to cultural fusion. It not only in this art, literature, architect, cuisine, technology, etc., but more importantly, created a syncretic 
consciousness that permeated, permeated through common people. The edifice of modern India is built on the principle of equal rights, equal opportunities and equal responsibilities for all its citizens. The equality is guaranteed by our constitution and law. This is also a part of our thinking and we will all strive and we should try to bring about that convergence where there is an equality in all respects amongst all of us. India continues to play its role as a refuge for heterodox ideas with infinite capacity to absorb dissent. Dissent does not mean disintegration. Dissent does not mean necessarily a confrontation. But in this country, because of your thought, because of your idea, no one is under threat. As a proud civilizational state, India believes in promoting tolerance, dialogue and cooperation to deal with the challenges of our time. It was no coincidence that despite having around 200 million Muslims, the involvement of Indian citizens in the global terrorism has been incredibly low. Yet the challenge of extremism and global terrorism compels us not to lower our guards, to preserve the security and stability within our borders and also rise to the security challenges beyond. India has been leading the fight, the fight against individuals and organizations who are promoting extremism, narcotics and terrorism. I vividly recall the terrorist attack on the Grand Mosque in Moscow and Mecca in 1979 and how that incident became a turning point in the way Saudi Arabia looked at itself and the rest of the world. The attack was carried out by a handful of militants who seized the Holy Mosque and held the holds hostages for several days. The attack brought the issue of terrorism to the forefront and forced Saudi Arabia to reevaluate its security measures and foreign policy. India has also been a victim of terrorism for many decades. The country has faced numerous terrorist attacks, including the 2008 Mumbai attacks, which claimed 168 lives. India has actively been working to combat terrorism through various means, including strengthening its security apparatus, enacting new laws and cooperating with other countries to prevent terrorist activities. However, in this war against terror, even in the face of great provocation, India has steadfastly upheld the rule of law, rights of its citizens, and protection of human values and human rights. India is an extremely responsible power, but when the need for a hot pursuit of these terrorist heavens, it was first felt, we have gone all out to destroy terrorism in our national interest. Excellency, you have in the past rejected any attempt to associate terrorism with any nationality, civilization or religion. I think this is the absolutely right approach. Terrorism is not linked to any religion. It is the individuals who get misguided and probably it is the duty of the citizen of the people to see that they can belong to any religion, any faith, any belief system, any political ideology, but anyone who takes the path of violence will have to be will have to be uh, countered as effectively and with all the tools that are possible. You have been a strong votary of the need to shun the path of conflict and supported peace. As G20 president, we ideated on slogan for the summit. And I would like to repeat and emphasize it. This, our tag word for that was one earth, one family, one future. Either we stay together or we are doomed to stay together. If we have to stay together, we have to cooperate. We have got to bring about that harmony, which Her Excellency you so eloquently told. It's only with mutual trust and cooperation amongst nations, civil societies, religious groups and people of the world that security, stability, sustainable development and a dignified life 
for all citizens and the future citizens, the future generations can be ensured. In the past, some nations might have fought with each other to resolve their differences. But as our Prime Minister says, this is no more an age of war. Future battles for the good of humanity will have to be fought against hunger, poverty, ignorance and want. In today's world, with complex geopolitical challenges confronting us, the region has to become a beckoning light for the humanity to usher into an era of peace and harmony. We are fortunate, we have got many distinguished religious leaders sitting here from various pursuits and various thoughts, and I do hope that they understand the great responsibility to lead the society in these critical moments. Our difference will have to take the back seat. We will have to resolve them through dialogue and interaction and compromise. And we will have to realize that unleash the human potential and make this world a better place to live for us and our coming generations. Excellency, your to visit today is an opportunity to deepen the cooperation between our two countries and then explore new avenues for partnership. I am sure that you will enjoy your stay in India and carry fond memories of the, pla of the place back with you. You mentioned about some institutional arrangement that you should make to carry this passage forward. We do look forward for your guidance and help in this matter. India and Saudi Arabia together can probably do a lot and we need to further strengthen the ties between our two nations. I would once again like to express my thanks and gratitude to you, Your Excellency, for your visit. And I would also like to thank the Islamic Center for organizing this conference and the Pusra Foundation for their initiative. And my thanks also to the distinguished guests and spiritual leaders who have graced this occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, His Excellency, for your enlightening and insightful speech. Your emphasis on the importance of dialogue between civilization and vision for a shared future has really inspired us today. Now I request Mr. Srajuddin Qureshi, Chairman of Khosrow Foundation, and the President of India Islamic Cultural Center to kindly present a memento and shawl to His Excellency Sheikh Al Isa as a token of gratitude and appreciation. I request Sri Ajit Doval sir to kindly accept the memento from us, memento and shawl from us as a token of heartfelt gratitude. Now I request Srajuddin Qureshi sahab to kindly propose a vote of thanks.
डॉक्टर मोहम्मद बिन अब्दुल करीम अली साहब सेक्रेटरी जनरल ऑफ द मुस्लिम वर्ल्ड लीग एंड फॉर्मर मिनिस्टर ऑफ जस्टिस सऊदी अरबिया स्टीम इज एक्सलेंसी श्री अजीत जोहर साहब कीर्ति चक्र नेशनल एड सिक्योरिटी एडवाइजर ऑफ इंडिया डिस्टिंग्विश रिलीजियस एंड कम्युनिटी लीडर्स एकेडेमिक्स वैल्यूड मेंबर्स ऑफ द प्रेस लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन of course it is a great pleasure and personal honor to stand before you as the chairman of kusro foundation and president of india islamic culture center having had the opportunity to host such an important event today i would like to begin by expressing my heartfelt thanks to his excellency dr mohammed bin abdul karim isa your insightful insightful discourse on various relevant issues have not only enlightened us but also touched our hearts very deeply i wish to extend my gratitude to his excellency <coughs> shri ji dawal ji national security advisor to the prime minister of india for taking his initiative to invite his excellency dr visa to india and giving us the honor to host him today <coughs> We have always been an embodiment of true Indianness, and your commitment to inclusively inclusivity, your gestures of engagement, and constant outreach to Muslim community in India. We all love you, sir. Ajit Dawal sir, we all love you. community particularly has been winning hearts across the nation your valuable insights today have made us reflect upon our roles for fostering an environment of harmony and peaceful existence coexistence your dedication towards the security and unity of our nation is truly commendable and we are all of you proud we are all proud of you a great symbol of the, of you can say nation mr ji dobar my gratitude also extend to all the religious and community leaders that accompanying his excellency dr risa eminent personalities ambassadors vice chancellors of various universities lawyers doctors civil servants scholars members of the media for gracing this occasion i am very hopeful we can take the insights gained from today's interaction into our everyday lives and start towards fostering a safe tolerant and inclusive nation and safe tolerant and inclusive world i really am grateful to all of you thank you very much excellency lisa energy dovalsa